Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Philosophically, the geometry of the projective space is controlled by the geometry of the affine space, and that is uh, going back to Euclid. Okay, philosophical. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so you know, uh, so let's recall uh, that if you take a point in uh, uh, n-dimensional projective space, and you take a polynomial uh, vanishing on the line about that point okay uh, in the affine space n plus 1 dimension affine space then we saw that uh, every homogeneous component of that polynomial will also vanish on that line and in particular that polynomial uh, will not have any constant term okay. So it will be a sum of uh, homogeneous uh, components and there would not be any homogeneous component of degree 0 all right. Now uh, now this leads into uh, the study of what are called as homogeneous ideals and uh, the uh, when you try to translate uh, from uh, the algebraic geometry of projective space to commutative algebra you end up studying properties of homogeneous ideals okay and the key to defining a homo homogeneous ideal is is actually uh, comes actually from this observation. So, uh, so let me explain that in more detail so so the first thing is uh, uh, so you the the translation from projective geometry to commutative algebra is in the language of homogeneous ideals uh, and graded rings okay. So this is a little bit of uh, algebra that uh, one needs to recall all right. So recall the, the following things. Uh, the notion of a graded ring first uh, a ring uh, S is called graded is called well ok 
separated which is supposed to mean uh, n graded or rather uh, whole numbers graded okay. if uh, S is the direct sum of S d, d greater than or equal to 0 okay, with each with each S sub d an abelian group an abelian uh, 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 of course abelian uh, a subgroup an additive subgroup subgroup uh, of S uh, and such that uh, S uh, P into S Q lands inside S P plus Q for P Q uh, greater than or equal to 0 ok. So, uh, under multiplication so you see what is the uh, here the W corresponds to whole numbers which means that you include 0 and the along with the natural numbers which which start from 1 ok and uh, this indexing is on the whole numbers all right and the ring should break into a direct sum of pieces each piece is a additive subgroup of the the additive group underlying the ring ok and there is a multiplication in the ring the multiplication should uh, uh, the multiplication of the pth piece with the qth piece should land you inside the p plus qth piece ok and of course you know uh, uh, well if my my ring could uh, uh, my ring need not uh, have one if you want ok when I want when I want to make a general definition it need not even have one and uh, it need not even be commutative and uh, uh, in that case I will also uh, it also follows that S q into S p will also land into S p plus q by this ok and uh, therefore the p piece and the if you take an element in the pth piece and an element in the qth piece and you multiply them they land in the p plus q piece ok. In we say that uh, uh, this is meant to this also sometimes referred to as the multiplication uh, preserves the gradation ok it respects the gradation it takes a. So, what you do is you you think of elements of S d as uh, elements uh, uh, as homogeneous elements of degree d so the elements of each sd are called to are called homogeneous of degree d okay and what you are saying is that uh, every element of the ring uh, can be decomposed into uh, homogeneous elements of certain degrees and the decomposition is unique the uniqueness of the decomposition is because of the direct sum okay the direct sum tells you okay that every element of s can be broken down can be written as a sum of finitely many elements which have which are homogeneous which belongs to certain homogeneous species and uh, the e for each homo for e uh, the, the, the each comp the each summand uh, each summand in that sum is unique for that homogeneous. So, the if you give me an element here the it is uh, for any d it is dth homogeneous piece is uniquely determined that is what the direct sum is supposed to mean all right and the multiplication preserves uh, the uh, uh, it respects the homogeneity in the sense that a homogeneous element of degree p multiplied by a homogeneous element of degree q leads to a homogeneous element of degree p plus q ok. So, this is the definition of what a graded ring is of course, but uh, uh, so let me write this elements of uh, uh, s d are called homogeneous of degree d 
elements of SD are called homogeneous of degree D, all right. And of course, uh, uh, the the particular case that we are interested in is uh, polynomial rings and uh, their quotients by prime ideals, uh, uh, their quotients by ideals which are homogeneous, okay. So, uh, so what is a what is a basic example? Uh, the basic example is of course the polynomial ring uh, in uh, uh, finitely many variables. I will take the variables to be n plus 1 variables because I am always thinking of projective space. So example uh, uh, take uh, s equal to k x0 etc xn uh, s d is equal to uh, the subset of s consisting of uh, uh, homogeneous polynomials of degree d okay and so you know <coughs> uh, you know that the whole polynomial ring is a direct sum of uh, homogeneous polynomials of various degrees uh, that is just a reflection of the fact that you take any polynomial you can break it down uniquely into homogeneous components each component is a homogeneous polynomial of certain fixed degree okay and uh, <coughs> so this is this is the example that we keep in mind okay and of course uh, it's not just to work with uh, it's not just enough to work with this but we need to also work with graded quotients of this okay so uh, for that so it's a uh, you know the 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 intuitive idea is very clear uh, if you uh, to get a quotient you have to go more low an ideal okay but to get a graded quotient okay you have to go more low uh, what is called a homogeneous ideal okay so what is a homogeneous ideal uh, an ideal an ideal uh, i in uh, s uh, which is graded where s is graded. So, I will draw a line here okay I will draw a line here and I am again going back to the old uh, uh, situation where I take a graded ring which is direct sum of uh, homogeneous pieces okay uh, 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 I should say it is a direct sum of <coughs> pieces which uh, correspond to homogeneous uh, elements of certain homo uh, fixed homogeneous degree okay so take an ideal s <coughs> uh, an, an ideal i in s it's called homogeneous <coughs> if uh, i is i intersection sd direction D okay. So look at this definition <coughs> of what a homogeneous ideal is. <coughs> so the definition is: you take the ideal, all right, you intersect it with S sub D. Okay. When you intersect the ideal with S sub D, what you get is, mind you, not an ideal, because you are only intersecting with the additive subgroup, and you know the ideal is also an additive subgroup. Therefore, the intersection is again an additive subgroup. Therefore, each of these is an additive subgroup of the additive group underlying the uh, ring S. Okay, and now you take the direct sum. Okay, of course it is a direct sum because all the SDs themselves are pieces of a direct sum. But you take the direct sum, and that uh, usually it's it's obvious that this will be contained inside I. Okay, the right side every piece okay i intersection sd refers to all the elements of i which are homogeneous of degree d what is an element of i intersection sd it is an element of i which is in sd but elements of s d are thought to uh, are, are called homogeneous elements of degree d so i intersection sd is those elements of i which are homogeneous of degree d okay and of course if you take a direct sum of this mind you the direct sum an element in the direct sum only consists of a finite sum even though the direct sum is over uh, a collection of infinite infinitely many uh, subscripts 
okay. So, an element here is certainly here by definition, but the requirement is every element here comes from here that is the homogeneity definition, okay. So, you know what it means, it means that so, so in see in other words, in other words, uh, if f is in i, okay, if you take f is in f is an element of i, uh, then uh, since s is a direct sum of all the SDs, d greater than or equal to zero, what you'll have is f will be f not plus f one plus etc. up to fm okay you will get this all right where uh, so you, you will get a finite expression like this okay you get a finite exp uh, expression like this because it is a it is an expression in a direct sum it will live only uh, uh, up to a finite index okay beyond this all the f uh, fgs will be 0 right. So, uh, so here fi or in SI or FD is in SD, you get a breakup like this, okay. And so, if you take an F and you break it into homogeneous pieces, then the condition is that this condition will tell you that each FI is also in F, okay. So, you see the so. Uh, implies that f d belongs to i for every d uh, for every index d okay. See why is that true that is because you see take an f here take an f here f is because f is in i and i is in this uh, in this graded ring and this graded ring has this graded decomposition f has a decomposition all right where each of these pieces come uh, are homogeneous of the corresponding degrees all right on the other hand since you have written like this f also has a decomposition here because of the equality f belongs here so it cor corresponds to an element here so it also is a it also has a decomposition in terms of homogeneous elements okay but both decompositions are to be valid in s but in s there is only one decomposition the decomposition in s is unique therefore what it forces is that each fd is already in i so the moral of the story is uh, uh, an ideal is homogeneous saying that an ideal is homogeneous is the same as saying that every element of that ideal you take any element in that ideal every homogeneous piece of that element is also in that ideal one way of saying that uh, ideal is homogeneous is saying that it can you take any element in that ideal okay then every homogeneous piece of that element is also back in that ideal okay and you see that is exactly a geometric uh, that is exactly algebraic reflection of this geometric fact if your polynomial vanishes on a line then every homogeneous component of that polynomial vanishes on that line. So, what you are saying is that if the line is in the 0 set of an ideal suppose you take the line to be in the 0 set of an ideal okay and you take an element of that ideal that means that is a polynomial which vanishes on that line then what you are saying is that every homogeneous component of that polynomial is also vanishing on that line. So, if the 0 set of an ideal contains a line what you are saying is that every uh, element in that ideal okay every polynomial in that ideal uh, is such that each of its homogeneous components is also again uh, uh, it in, in the ideal uh, of that of that line okay. So, this is this is just a this is just a geometric reflection of this algebraic fact. So, this is the key to uh, defining uh, what a homogeneous ideal is and the advantage of having a homogeneous ideal is that once uh, you have a graded ring and you have a homogeneous ideal the quotient ring s mod i automatically gets a graded structure it becomes a graded ring okay. So, uh, the key to 
translating project from projective geometry to commutative projective algebraic geometry to commutative algebra is that you have to change uh, uh, from ordinary ideals to projective ideals uh, from ordinary ideals to homogeneous ideals and you have to change from ordinary rings to graded rings. So the language instead of just looking at rings and ideals commutative rings and ideals in them the language becomes a language of homogeneous uh, ideals and graded rings okay that is the language that you should use uh, that is the that is the algebra that you should use for projective algebra geometry okay and uh, well now now the fact is uh, uh, so let me tell you what happens uh, there are there are a few uh, nice facts uh, so uh, lemma so is a lemma that you can easily check the the sum product uh, intersection and radical uh, uh, so the sum product intersection of uh, of homogeneous ideals is homogeneous and the radical of a homogeneous ideal is also homogeneous okay so this collection of homogeneous ideals in a graded ring is a well uh, it's well behaved under the operation of taking some product intersection and radical okay uh, this is a uh, i mean this is a very uh, straightforward verification algebraic verification which i leave you to do okay and therefore you know uh, uh, the the um, so you know we with armed with this we can now translate uh, from projective geometry projective algebraic geometry to commutative algebra. So you know let me recall that uh, as far as affine algebraic geometry was concerned, what we did was uh, if you recall we had uh, we had uh, affine space. And we have uh, this is the geometric picture. The algebraic picture is the coordinate ring of a fine space. <coughs> uh, the uh, the algebraic picture is the coordinate ring of a fine space is the polynomial ring in n variables. Okay, and you know, uh, well, uh, you had you had a you had a map like this, which uh, was called as I, and you had a map like this, which is called as which we called as Z, and what did these maps do? Uh, well, if you give me a subset T, uh, if you give me a subset Y of a fine space, then uh, I get I of Y, uh, the ideal of functions polynomials that vanish on Y, and conversely, if you give me an ideal I here, I uh, in the in the polynomial ring in n variables, I get the closed subset Z of I, and every closed subset is of this form. Okay. And you know that, uh, so you get a correspondence <coughs> between uh, uh, closed subsets here, and on that side you'll have to take radical ideals, okay? And uh, we had things like, uh, uh <coughs> so on this side, if you take uh, sub varieties, affine sub varieties, which are irreducible algebraic sets, they corresponded on that side to prime ideals, which were of course radical ideals. And points here will correspond to maximal ideals there. Okay, so we had this nice translation from uh, uh, algebraic geometry to commutative algebra. All right, this is for the affine space. Now we're going to uh, we can do that now for the projective space as well. All right, so uh, uh, so in the same way, what what we'll do? So I'll I'll have to make a 
I have to make a statement here. Uh, <coughs> so here is one more lemma which I forgot to mention. Probably let, let, let me mention it here. Uh, an ideal I in S is homogeneous if and only if <coughs> it is generated by homogeneous elements. So, this is another definition of when an ideal is homogeneous. This definition of homo uh, an ideal being homogeneous requires its generators to be homogeneous. Okay, so uh, whereas the earlier definition of homogeneity is that uh, you take uh, uh, the ideal is the sum of its components, homogeneous components, and which translates to saying that given any element in the ideal each of its homogeneous components is again back in that ideal okay. So this is again a simple algebraic fact that you can uh, uh, verify as an exercise okay and the reason I need it is is the following uh, recall uh, that we have defined uh, in on the projective space okay we have defined algebraic uh, we, have, we have defined algebraic set closed set uh, 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 as zero sets of a bunch of homogeneous polynomials okay and again instead of just taking the zero set of a bunch of homogeneous polynomials you can take the zero set of the ideal generated by these homogeneous polynomials and by this lemma that ideal will be a homogeneous ideal okay. So what you will do is so we will do the following thing we will use yes we will use this notation s of p n this is the this is the commutative algebraic picture this is k x naught to x n. So this uh, this is thought of this is called the homogeneous coordinate ring of projective space okay projective n space. See in the in the affine situation okay a we use the word a to give you the affine coordinate ring okay which is the number of which is the polynomial ring in as many variables as uh, the dimension of the affine space. Now what you do is in the projective case uh, the analog is the so called homogeneous coordinate ring okay and you know why they are called homogeneous coordinates because when you write a point in projective space you these coordinates are only when you put them together they are only a common ratio okay I mean they, they, they are given by a set of ratios that is the reason we put a colon okay a point in projective space has coordinates x0 colon x1 colon etcetera xn and the colon means that there is a uh, there is a ratio involved and therefore it is a it is a it is a it is that is why it is called homogeneous and that is why it is called the homogeneous coordinate ring okay and uh, uh, for that matter each x i is a homogeneous uh, polynomial of uh, degree 1 right and what we do is well uh, uh, how did we how do we start uh, we say closed set is of the form z of t where t is uh, in uh, yes it is in this uh, and I will put a I will put this h okay which which means uh, the union of the various degree d pieces namely all the possible homogeneous elements okay. See this this uh, homogeneous coordinate ring is a direct sum of its degree d pieces okay which is just trying to say that polynomial in degree n is a uh, is uniquely expressible expressible as a sum of uh, its homogeneous uh, components but what you do is instead of taking if you take the direct sum you will get the uh, the homogeneous coordinate ring instead of taking the direct sum if you take union you will get all the homogeneous elements because by definition a homogeneous element is supposed to be an element in one of these pieces okay so uh, where of course SD of PN is homogeneous polynomials of degree D in these variables that is what it means okay. So you take so what I am doing is why I am writing it like this is I am taking I, I am taking a subset of homogeneous elements I am taking uh, I am my T is a 
is not just any bunch of polynomials in this polynomial ring it is homogeneous elements that is the reason I have put the subscript the superscript h okay and that is just gotten by taking this union okay and what you do is that for this t you take the 0 set of t but now you see you are taking the 0 set in projective space okay mind you sometimes if you are working with both the affine space and the projective space at the same time you will have to worry about uh, where you are taking the 0 sets you you need better notation. So sometimes it is uh, if you do not want any confusion you put z sub t n of t which is which means you are looking at the 0 sets uh, the 0 set of t in t n okay and this is how the close sets in the projective space are defined this is how the Zariski topology is defined okay uh, this was the this was the second definition okay uh, we had three definitions of the Zariski topology the first one was a as quotient topology of the uh, punctured uh, n plus 1 dimensional affine space above the second one is this where the closed sets are given by uh, 0 sets of a bunch of homogeneous polynomials and the third is of course uh, the topology that is gotten by gluing the n plus 1 uh, uh, pieces uh, the we each of which is a uh, uh, which is isomorphic to an affine space okay uh, of dimension n so well so this is how we have defined it okay and now what we can do is well uh, so you have this so you have this uh, uh, just as in this case you have this you have this map z okay and uh, there is also this map in this direction what is this map in this direction in the affine case you give me any set y then you look at all those uh, polynomials which vanish on y okay and so you go like this and then this is automatically an ideal here okay so I land on the collection of ideals on this side okay uh, so you know I also need to put an i here right and uh, you have to be careful that uh, you should simply not say all the polynomials here which vanish on uh, uh, a given subset here uh, mind you uh, if a polynomial vanishes on a subset then it has to it has to be homogeneous I mean each homogeneous piece of that polynomial has to vanish on that subset you see what we just saw uh, uh, some time ago was that you know if a polynomial vanishes on a line passing through the origin okay then each piece of that polynomial each homogeneous piece of that polynomial will also vanish on the line through the origin. So it means that if you are so, so you must think of the polynomial vanishing on a line on the origin uh, on the line on a line through the origin as you must think of it like this take the point in projective space corresponding to that line and that point is a 0 of that polynomial in the projective space. So what you are saying is if your polynomial vanishes at a point in projective space then each of its homogeneous components will also vanish at that point in projective space and of course the constant term will not be there right. So uh, if I if I want to make sense of a polynomial vanishing on a subset of projective space I need to make sure that every that first of all that it has no constant term and I also need to make sure that every homogeneous piece of that polynomial also vanishes on uh, that subset of projective space alright. So what you do is you see finally everything reduces to vanishing of homogeneous polynomials. So when you define this i you define it very carefully you uh, keeping this in mind you define i of y to be the uh, ideal in uh, the uh, homogeneous coordinate ring generated by all f in the all homogeneous f namely all homogeneous polynomials such that f of y is 0 for every y in y okay. So this is how you define when you define the ideal of y you define it as the ideal generated by all those homogeneous polynomials which vanish on y alright. So you see therefore this is an ideal which is generated by homogeneous elements therefore it is a homogeneous ideal because that is what the lemma uh, above as we call says okay. So this is actually this is a homogeneous ideal this is a homogeneous ideal. So what has happened is uh, if you start with the uh, uh, if, 
you start with a set of homogeneous elements you get the 0 set of that which is the closed subset of projective space and uh, if you start with any subset of projective space you get the ideal of that uh, of that subset and uh, that will be homogeneous ideal by definition and whatever happened here more or less will happen there except for one or two uh, subtleties. So let me tell you what are the things that are going to happen you know you know a few things uh, in the in the affine situation what do you know you know that you know if I take uh, 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 so the Lewis and starts says that I of z of i is rad i that is one fact okay then if I take z of script i of y I get y bar the the Zariski closure of y so z of script i of y is y bar okay and uh, the fact is this is that uh, the same thing will hold here except except with one uh, subtlety for the null set so let me so let me state it here so what is going to happen here also I am going to get uh, i of uh, z of i is rad i okay and uh, uh, for for of course uh, i not x not etc xn so and well uh, the other thing is z of i of y will be y bar okay so both facts will be uh, true here also except that here the ideal i start with should not be the maximal ideal corresponding to the zero in the affine space above because you know i have thrown it out when i got the projective space below i i have thrown out i have taken the punctured affine space and then i have gone modulo an equal situation namely i have taken the lines in the punctured affine space passing through the origin okay i have thrown out the origin but the origin corresponds to this ideal in the affine space above the point 0 0 0 0 0 n plus 1 coordinates that corresponds to the maximal ideal generated by the variables and this is the idea this this is the only very ideal that you have to leave out it is a maximal ideal but you have to forget it and it will not uh, so, so that maximal ideal will not it is also a homogeneous ideal it is also a homogeneous ideal because it is generated by the coordinates which are homogeneous functions they are all homogeneous of degree 1 okay. So it is a certainly a homogeneous ideal but the point is that uh, it is a maximum ideal it is a homogeneous ideal but it is not going to come into the picture okay. So on this side you are only going to consider homogeneous ideals which are different from this particular maximum ideal that is ideal generated by all the variables and therefore this uh, particular ideal generated by all these variables is given a very special name it is called the irrelevant maximal ideal okay. So there is a name for this uh, x0 through xn is called the irrelevant maximal ideal. it is the irrelevant maximal ideal okay and it is a homogeneous ideal but then the homogeneous ideals we are interested in are everything except that and that is why that is called irrelevant alright it is irrelevant with respect to the projective geometry right and uh, uh, so I what I want to tell you is that you can prove these statements from the corresponding statements for affine space if you just remember uh, that uh, the quotient on the projective space is this is the quotient topology given the Zariski topology on the punctured affine space above okay. So all these statements can be proved by by translating everything to the affine space above okay and by using the corresponding results in the uh, affine case. So what you must understand is you must understand the following uh, uh, I mean this is a picture that should help you to think what is going on so you see you must always think of uh, this is the affine space uh, this is the punctured affine space and that is this uh, projection onto the projective space okay and how you should think of it is that if you take if you if, if I if I draw a picture like this of the projective space and well I take
take the zero set of a homogeneous ideal here, okay, and this is the zero set in uh, this is the zero set in Tn of this ideal, okay. That's how closed subsets in uh, Pratiti space look like. Then how you should think of it is if if you take the the affine space above. Uh, so in the affine space above, the diagram will be something like a cone. So it will be. So this is the diagram in the affine space above. Okay, and what has happened is that for uh, each of these lines, they go down to a particular point. So this this line. Uh, uh, each of these generating lines L uh, through a certain point uh, lambda naught through lambda n goes to the corresponding point uh, in projective space lambda with, with homogeneous coordinates lambda naught through lambda n and this is to be thought of as simply the line above this is just L of lambda naught etcetera lambda n. So you think of this point as a line above okay. So what you will get is if you give if you give me any projective uh, any closed subset of projective space take its inverse image here and then the only thing that will be missing is zero you which is what you will get when you take its closure you will get a closed subset there okay zero is the only thing that will be missed so if you add it you get this picture which is which you can easily think of as a cone over this closed subset in projective space so you see this this thing is the cone it is called the affine cone over uh, Z T n i. This is called the affine cone, all right. So, and uh, you know, so the picture is something like this. So, if you give me any closed subset of projective space and you take the inverse image in the affine space above and close it up so that you add the origin what you get is a cone above and what is this cone what is it this is this is actually this is not this is none other than this is just a z zeros of i in the affine space it's the same i take the same ideal the same ideal mind you the ideal is an ideal in uh, the affine coordinate ring of a n plus 1 which is thought of as projective coordinate ring homogeneous coordinate ring of p n note that a of a n plus 1 is s of p n and this is of course polynomial ring in uh, these n plus 1 variables okay and i is sitting here okay. So if you start with i homogeneous homogeneous here the 0 set is a closed set in the projective space if you take its inverse image and add the point 0 you will get the uh, uh, projective cone it is it's, it's called the uh, it's called it's, it's called the affine cone it is the cone in the affine space above and what is the affine cone it is just the 0 set of uh, the same ideal considered as a 0 set in the affine space above okay. So uh, any questions about uh, Z i in uh, P n can be translated to questions about Z i in A n plus 1 okay and then in, in the affine space of course I know I have a good dictionary I have the null Schroeder sets I have all, all that I need so I use that to prove uh, uh, things in uh, get statements in the projective space okay so all so the point is somehow already the geometry that you know the affine geometry that you know that kind of uh, helps you to get the projective geometry okay it controls the projective geometry. So uh, now you see uh, and well so what you will get so there are two uh, there, are, there are two facts that I want to say here you get uh, you get a uh, bijective correspondence between closed subsets and uh, radical ideals. So uh, if you look at this situation the 
projective space and the homogeneous coordinate tree you will get a bijective correspondence between closed subsets and homogeneous radical ideas okay and in that collection you will have to get rid of this particular homogeneous radical ideal which is this maximal ideal corresponding to the origin above which you have thrown out okay so this is the irrelevant maximal ideal so what you get in the projective case is a bijective correspondence between closed subset of closed subsets of projective space on one side on the other side you will have to take homogeneous ideals homogeneous radical ideals which are different from the irrelevant maximal ideal you take the collection of all homogeneous radical ideals which are different from the irre irrelevant maximal ideal that is in bijective correspondence with the closed subsets of projective space okay so let me write that check number 1 uh, i and z give inverse maps defining your bijective correspondence between closed subsets of projective space and the set of and homogeneous maximal homogeneous radical ideals in s of p n except the the irrelevant maximal ideal you will get this bijective correspondence okay so the difference from the affine case is that there you simply consider radical, radical ideals here you consider homogeneous radical ideals and there you consider of course all ideals but here you consider you leave out that particular irrelevant maximal ideal okay and that's one thing then the second thing is of course that uh, uh, in this case uh, the correspondence in both directions is it's inclusion reversing it's an inclusion reversing correspondence because as the ideal uh, grows bigger the zero set becomes smaller okay and conversely so uh, the same thing happens here as well okay so this is an inclusion reversing correspondence the correspondence in one is inclusion reversing that is also true then of course uh, uh, whatever uh, versions of the nullstellen sorts that you had for the affine case you also have corresponding version of nullstellen sorts for the projective case what is the nullstellen sorts for the affine case if a polynomial vanishes uh, at every point of a variety then uh, some power uh, 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 if a polynomial vanishes on the zero set of an ideal, then uh, some power of the polynomial is in the radi uh, uh, some power of the polynomial is in the ideal. That is the notion of sorts. Okay, and the same statement will work for the projective case. If you take a homogeneous pol, but the only thing is now you have to use homogeneous polynomials and you have to use homogeneous ideals. So if you have a homogeneous polynomial which is positive degree and if it vanishes on the zero set of a homogeneous ideal then some power of that polynomial is certainly in that ideal that is the homogeneous version projective version of the nullstellen sorts again the projective version of the nullstellen sorts can be uh, you know uh, derived from the affine version by going to the affine space above okay so this is the uh, whatever you want to do here you go above and do it okay because there you already have a clear picture you have affine geometry already there so you use that right so uh, so let me write that have a homogeneous uh, uh, projective version have a projective version or homogeneous version uh, 
version of the notional ansatz and uh, that is just uh, uh, if f is homogeneous and f belongs to i of z of i where i is homogeneous then f for m is an i for some m greater than or equal to 1. So, this is the homogeneous version of the uh, notional ansatz and uh, uh, so the only thing that uh, has not been said in, in all this is what happens to this irrelevant maximal ideal. So, uh, uh, that is the only thing that I will have to tell you and that is pretty easy to uh, state. So, uh, so here is a fact that uh, uh, it is a fact about the irrelevant maximal ideal, but certainly it is not irrelevant to our discussion. So, you know, so here is a lemma which you can check uh, i uh, in S of p n a homogeneous ideal. Uh, the following are equivalent number 1 i is uh, i contains s d for some d uh, greater than or equal to for some d ok. Then 2 uh, z of i in p n is n t ok. Uh, number 3 rad i is the irrelevant maximal ideal ok. So, these are uh, and this tells you why you uh, throw out the irrelevant maximal ideal ok. So, these are all th these three are th these three are equivalent conditions and uh, uh, you know if i contains s d then it means that i will contain uh, x i power d for every i. Therefore, rad i will contain x i therefore, rad i will contain the ideal generated by the x i ok. And of course, there is another there is there is one more uh, possibility it is either this or it could be the whole ring. So, I should also write uh, or of or s of p n itself right. So, it can happen that uh, see the ideal may contain s s not s not is uh, homogeneous polynomials of degree 0 they are the constants. So, if the ideal contain constants it will contain non zero elements of the field. So, it is uh, the ideal will be a unit ideal and therefore, the radical of the ideal will also be uh, the whole ring it will be the unit ideal. So, these three are uh, equivalent conditions and this is this is the exact reason why you throw out the irrelevant maximal ideal to get a magic two plus matrix ok. And uh, uh, ok, so with that uh, we have now uh, uh, we have now a nice dictionary between uh, projective algebraic geometry and on the on, on the one side on the geometric side and on the algebraic si side we have a homogene the homogeneous coordinate ring and a homogeneous ideal theory. Uh, now let me tell you a point of surprise. We have seen for an affine variety that uh, of course we uh, uh, so that reminds me. Uh, we defined an affine variety to be an irreducible closed subset of affine space ok. In the same way we define a projective variety to be an irreducible closed subset of projective space. It will follow that uh, by, by same by the same argument it will follow that you know if uh, you know a closed subset here is uh, in affine space is irreducible if and only if the corresponding uh, its ideal is prime. The same thing will hold also in projective space. A closed subset of projective space is going to be irreducible if and only if the ideal, its ideal, is a homogeneous prime ideal. Okay, 
and uh, and the fact that you will have to remember when you go uh, here is that under a continuous map the image of an irreducible set is irreducible okay so that is a fact that is a topological fact that you have to remember and use okay so to to get the proof of the fact that uh, a closed subset of projective space is irreducible if and only its ideal is a homogeneous prime ideal okay and uh, there are there are uh, two uh, uh, big differences if you take an affine variety you know that the globe the ring of regular functions is the same as its coordinate ring okay and the coordinate ring is just polynomials okay and there are a lot of polynomials okay there are a lot of polynomial functions at the worst if it's even a single point you have uh, 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 i mean uh, you have constant functions but if it is not a point then you have many functions many non trivial polynomial functions on the on, on your affine variety okay however if you go to the if you go to the projective space there also you can define regular functions and the amazing thing will hap that will happen is on a projective variety namely an irreducible closed subset of projective space the only regular functions are constants okay so that is a major point of difference between affine geometry and projective geometry the uh, the other uh, major point of difference is the following we saw that two affine varieties uh, are isomorphic if and only if they are affine coordinate rings are isomorphic as k algebras okay but here the projective or the homogeneous coordinate ring is not such an invariant so what will happen is you can have two projective varieties which are isomorphic as projective varieties but their homogeneous coordinate rings are not isomorphic which means that the way they are uh, 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 the they, their homogeneous coordinate rings will depend on the way in which they are embedded in the ambient projective space okay so of course here the definition of a homogeneous coordinate ring of a projective variety is similar to the affine case namely in the affine case you take the uh, all the polynomials on the ambient affine space and go modulo the ideal of the variety okay here also you do the same thing you take the homogeneous coordinate ring of the ambient projective space and go modulo the ideal of the projective variety and you get what is called the homogeneous coordinate ring of the projective variety but the fact is that this is not an inva invariant of the projective variety it will depend on which projective space into which you are putting the projective variety so you see the geometry of projective varieties is far more complicated than the geometry of affine varieties this is what the complication is due to one is because there are no global reg uh, regular functions which are different from constants there are no non constant global regular functions that's one point of difficulty the second point of difficulty is that the homogeneous coordinate ring of a projective variety is not it's not uh, an invariant okay so this adds lot of richness to uh, and variety to the geometry of projective variety okay so uh, and that's what uh, more serious algebraic geometry is about studying projective varieties okay so i'll stop here